that's great. Yes. So hello everyone. Today we have Ishika with us, and she is going to tell us all about MLH Fellowship. So yes, let's start with Ishika's introduction. So hi everyone, my name is Ashika Shah and I'm kindly invited here by Uskan. Uh, I'm a third year student pursuing my B.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering from VIT Bangalore. Uh, apart from my technical skills, I like going to hackathons. I enjoy music, and yeah, that's all about me. And I kind of like to keep myself uh, engrossed in a lot of things like internships and MLH fellowship. And side by side, I keep doing uh, building projects and everything. So yeah, that's like a bit about me. So Ishika, as you mentioned, MLH Fellowship. Can you tell the viewers what MLH Fellowship actually is? Okay. So MLH Fellowship is um, it's not like any other fellowship where uh, you know you just think not like a scholarship type thing, but it's more of a education program. Uh, it's a, a place where you can learn and uh, you can build projects or build something for the industry. Uh, itself, like we have one open source program in there where you can uh, make pull requests and like you know contribute to the code of big companies like Facebook and Adobe and everything, AWS as well, and there are other tracks as well with like software engineering and stuff. They you basically work from scratch uh, mm -hmm. and, and con contribute to the industry directly. So um, that is what fellowship is about. So you also get mentors and you work within teams. So you have like fifteen to sixteen people in your pod. Pod is like a team. And um, yeah, that's that's basically about it. Okay, just one second. I have to go through the questions. <laughs> how long does the fellowship run for? Okay, Ishka. So, like, how long does the fellowship run for? What is the time period? Yeah. So, um, like, typically, uh, all the fellowships are three months long. Um, mm -hmm. Apart from that, we have like a prep fellowship program as well, which runs a little bit shorter. That's like for three weeks. When I did my prep fellowship, it was about for four weeks, but now I think they've reduced the time to three weeks. And apart from that, all the main fellowships are uh, for three months. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So, are there any cohorts in this fellowship? And like, if there is, so how many cohorts are there? Yeah, so there are typically three cohorts in a year, and uh, they're like uh, once fall, once uh, spring, and once summer. Uh, it happens three times a year, and it's for three months long. So like nine months, the fellowship runs for. So there's like usually one, one and a half month gap between each of the fellowship, like usually two. So that's about it. Okay. Okay. So what are the various tracks or the domains that this fellowship has? Like, is it only technical, or there are various other tracks as well to this fellowship? Yeah. So, uh, as technical, yeah, all of them are technical because you'll be like okay. contributing to the industry directly. So, hmm. uh, they're all technical, right? Uh, but the various uh, various domains. It's not only like software engineering. Okay, like uh, non CS people, non IT people can also apply. There's like uh, software engineering. There's open source, and then there's a production engineering track. And they keep uh, having like different tracks. Like they'll keep introducing and they'll keep cutting down some. But mo the two com like. The two standard ones are software engineering and open source. They're always there, and mm -hmm. production engineering is for somehow like you know somewhat people who are uh, more into hardware or something like that. And it teaches uh, people like from scratch. So uh, like not from not 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 from scratch really. Like you have to know your stuff really well, yeah. and then it'll like give you a platform to build on. Okay, so they're all technical and. Um, yeah, that's that's all about the domains. Like, there's I think one open source, one software engineering, and one production mm -hmm. engineering. These are the current ones right now. And uh, there's the prep fellowship. Like, it's a pre fellowship kind of thing. Okay. So as you mentioned, prep fellowship. So there is anything special or particular about this, uh, like this part of the program? So yeah. prep fellowship is like a build up to the main fellowship. Okay, so people uh, basically uh, the prep fellowship is like a build up to the main fellowship. So like uh, mm -hmm. people who are not really into open source and everything and who don't know much about it, and you know they're the beginners. Okay, so they can opt for the prep fellowship. And basically, okay. the fellowship has very limited options because like even in open source, their mm -hmm. company. Uh, so every time a company comes, they have specific requirements. As if some company has a requirement of like Python, or one company has like JavaScript. They need particular yeah. languages people code in, right? So it's not always possible for people who know other languages. But they're really good at it, but it's not always uh, possible to accommodate them, right? So yeah. I think uh, build up like it's like a build up to the fellowship where all of the people can be a part of it, and they can learn more and more uh, in the domains. 
so they're like mm. uh, if they're beginners and they don't know much about open source and everything they can be a part of this and uh, the prep fellowship it's like a three week program so you're not you're not much dedicated like so you don't have to like dedicate everything and everything but a lot of time yeah, in, yeah it's it's like a sprint of hackathons and everything so mm. you learn what you need for the main fellowship okay but okay. within a short period of time so from beginners you'll be like an intermediate Okay, so like everyone who is a part of pre fellowship uh, get promoted to the main fellowship, is it no, or that's, no? That's not always true. So okay. uh, once you're done with the pre fellowship, you can always apply for the main fellowship. And main if fellowship. You see, like for the the fellowship, you ne- require like a particular uh, standard, right? So if yeah. you are up to that mark, yeah, then then you get in, and you know if your skills are required, maybe see as mm-hmm. I mentioned that you know some companies only need Python, but you are like a Go Lang developer. You're really good at it, but Uh, there's not much space to accommodate you, and there's someone else who's yeah. doing quite really well. So obviously they're gonna get a preference. So obviously, yeah, uh, prep fellowship does not guarantee you a ticket to the fellowship, okay. but it makes it yeah. easier. Yeah? So if your requirements are a match, you definitely get. and you are up to the mark obviously yeah but that is the only way like it is not like some people can directly get selected for the main fellowship like you have no, to go to the pre one no no you can definitely get like get to the main fellowship directly okay okay, okay. yeah so but if they're like beginners you usually like when i began my fellowship journey i was a beginner so i didn't know much yeah. and like, i thought you know before applying i actually applied for main the main fellowship a couple of times and like i got a feedback that my uh, github's not you know that Like, like to the mark yet okay mm-hmm. like i i don't know my uh, skills really well like or i i have to improve in certain areas so i got mm-hmm. my feedback i improved on them and then i was like okay they introduced the pre fellowship program so i was like okay let's not why, let's not, let's try it okay and then i tried it mm-hmm. and it really um, you know my performance was good and that's how like you know they and my skills mm-hmm. were like my, i i do my development in python right and they had a company need that needed python so then i got mm-hmm. it so that's that's basically like it that is really great so like what is the eligibility criteria when can one apply for this okay so for when can you apply there are usually like hmm. three cohorts that i mentioned in a yeah. year so uh, every time before the fellowship they send out mails if you are like subscribed to the newsletter and you can join the discord as well so they you know usually have notifications up that you know applications are now open and it's usually like one and a half month before the fellowship begins Okay, you can start applying it. Uh, it's best if you apply like as soon as possible, like you know, at least a month prior, because they have like huge amounts of applications, and you know, it takes a lot of time to sort them out. So, uh, yeah, that would be the best time to apply for any fellowship, like properly, probably a one month prior uh, period. And mm-hmm. as to what the eligibility criteria, as to um, so. The first criteria is that uh, you should be above the age of thirteen with a legal guardian's permission, or you mm. should be above the age of eighteen. Um, so that's yeah. the age requirement. You should also have good connectivity, uh, like your internet setup and your AV setup should be all proper. Because like there are multiple meetings and everything you need to attend, and if your uh, internet's not proper, uh, you know it, it makes it really difficult. Right. So that's one criteria. Then you should be really good at at least one programming languages. Languages. Mm. all the program and so multiple you can but you should be fluent in at least one that you can be good at and you can yeah. put in you know to the fellowship <clears throat> apart from that there are like basic requirements that you should not be a part of any of the embarrassed uh, countries by the united states yeah. Not, yeah yeah there are no college restrictions basically and year restriction sure. No, they're not college. No, your restrictions. Actually, one of my um, board members is a hmm. college, like a, a high school going student, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there are people. There are many uh, people that like they're high school students, but they just started yeah. the university. So if you're good hmm. at it, I'm telling you, like you'll get in. <laughs> Yeah, because like I don't think school going kids are even aware of uh, programs like this. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, true. But like at least at least me when I was in school, I was even, I didn't even know what Python is, right? I didn't even know what yeah. C, C, plus or Python is, and how to do development was so like another level. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so but there there is one kid like he's really smart and he's he's I think just like three years, two years or three years younger than us, hmm. and he's he's a part of the fellowship right now, the open source fellowship. So yeah, it's not it's not totally impossible, I'd say. Yeah. But you you need your skills. and even after college people can apply as you mentioned that 18 yeah. plus is the criteria so yeah there's there's no limit as to like when you can stop applying you can definitely you know i have a like i have like my pod has like one person who's working full time at a company and does fellowship like for the side like, you know it's just like an additional uh, source yeah. of 
something in him and everything and my friend one of my friends pod has like a dad okay he's like 30 or something ish and he always has his kid in his video have like people from different countries with different you know like uh, yeah. this way of speaking different time zones as well so like and like i'm telling you they have like these hackathon things going on okay so at least in the first week you're a part of the hackathon and you're teamed up with people uh, from your pod itself like your pod has yeah. 15 people and there like hardly any chances you're all from the same country okay not all it is even even if you like meet two three people from the same country it's like a wonder okay so uh, <laughs> you you get teamed up with like different people from different uh, uh, like from different places of the world right so i had like one uh, friend from nigeria and one was in the us and i mean that's all even they're all in the same uh, group okay we're like team of three and it was the challenge we have to work on a project all of them all of us have to work together one time zone is like 5 hours after us like that's <laughs> 5:30 hours and then the other one's plus 12 or something hours and we're like how do we mean to be like cuz when i'm awake you're sleeping you're sleeping up it's difficult but it's fun yeah so when, when you find that one time like shift everything i'm 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 dedicating my like, this time to my fellowship these are for my these are for, like yeah the, and then everything yeah it's fun it's fun like you you learn time management and stuff a lot um you also mm-hmm. you know how to communicate because it's not you know like english is the primary language yeah mm-hmm. so you uh, like i was very uh, nervous when i used to speak at first like i used to fumble well and what not okay but then you know like this communication and everything it just gets better because you like start yeah. talking to people and you get you know fluent with it and i think it has a lot of perks <laughs> yeah no yeah everything is worth it at the end like all the efforts yeah. that you put in yeah. what is the time period around which the application starts okay so i'll tell you uh, right now since we're filming this video in december mm-hmm. okay there's one yeah. fellowship that's going to happen in jan let me grab the exact dates yeah we're starting yeah. on 31st of jan to 22nd of april of 3 okay. months so uh, the applications are open like right now so it's like 2 months prior mm-hmm. they open so uh, you can in the applications are open so you can keep applying so i would suggest please apply at least one month prior or yeah, they like so like, come next time yeah everyone watching this video please go and apply right now because like yes. it's never to worry like there hardly yeah. seats the 60 seats okay guys like the 15 yeah. they like four pods 15 people each in a pod so they're like 60 seats only so go right yeah. now and apply yeah and like you this is for the main fellowship you're talking about or the yeah. uh, pre fellowship at the, yeah, the main fellowship main fellowship okay hmm. okay and like what is the application procedure like what are the various steps that you went through before getting into the pre fellowship okay uh, yeah i'll tell you uh, i'll tell you like in general what are the steps okay and how yeah. i got in was like a different scene okay so in general the steps is for the pre fellowship there's a form you need to fill out okay Uh, mm-hmm. There are some essay answers. There are some project answers. You can submit a project. There's like you can put your resume and everything in. Uh, some there are some answers that you need to like put in, and you fill a form. You put all the requirements that you know you're not in any uh, embarrassed country. What are your yeah. education level and everything you put in there. So it's like a detailed form. You can go check it out at uh, fellowship MLH fellowships website. Um, that is fellowship dot MLH dot IO. So you can go in there and you can uh, fill out the form. and that's the first step so your uh, the criteria is that your form should be a really good level one like uh, it should be up to the mark your answer should be good you should show that you're passionate enough for the fellowship mm-hmm. okay and your project should be good okay so it should make sense it should not be like a calculator or something cuz it doesn't really make yeah. sense okay it should be something that should make a difference or something that people can use okay if mm-hmm. it's a script code you know if it's a command line interface or something it should be something that people can use uh, at least not if you know end to end it should be something um, that is in progress but it is like a, it, it is made up to a good level and your github should be really good hmm. okay um, that's i think all and then you put in all your education requirements and what have you done till now like have you written any unit tests or have you uh, worked with um, you know github have you worked with the uh, But is a different programming platform they ask you. So like a lot of uh, questions they ask you. So that's the first step. So if your uh, like form is up to the mark, okay, like your or your answers are good, your project is good, everything makes sense, everything is perfect in place, then there's the next step. You get a phone call interview. Okay, it's like a phone screen interview. 
uh, they get to know you. It's a 15 minute interview where they ask you questions about how you're passionate for the, uh, like, well, they check your passion for the uh, fellowship after all. Cause like it's, that it's a lot of dedication, like about around 30 hours a week. And if yeah. you're not passionate enough, you'll eventually like, you know, get bored and you'll not work for it. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. what they check mainly in the first interview is that, you know, uh, first of all, all the requirements are in check. Like, you know, you're above the age of 18 and everything. You're passionate, your communication skills are good and everything. So that's the first interview. Uh, they get to know you a little better and I think like, you know, most of the people get through the first interview because like it's it's not that uh, tough but to get the first interview is tough because your form should be up to the mark yeah. so after you get the first interview you just have to impress them that yes you are you know good enough for the fellowship okay and if you know someone is like yeah I'll see about it or something, <laughs> but they're definitely not gonna like it so definitely. yes from the energy keep up the passion okay so that's that's your first step then the second step goes uh, there's another interview Okay, that's the second interview. That is a technical interview. So it's also a fifteen-minute interview where they review your code that you submitted and they ask you questions about it. And you have to be really fluent with your tech stuff. Okay, if you don't know anything, then that's gonna backfire on you. That's okay. a red flag. Yeah, that's a red flag. Exactly. So they're gonna think that you know you copy the code or something like okay. that, and you don't know about it. So uh, you have to know your 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 stuff. Okay. So um, that's the technical interview. And mm -hmm. after the technical interview, if you're good enough, okay, and the project, the language that is your preference is also offered by the fellowship. Okay. Then yeah. they make it. I told you, yeah. if companies need that language, if the companies yeah. are there, you get it. If the companies are you not there, you know, this, this thing happened with one of my friends. He was like really mm. good at uh, Golang. Okay. And, uh, but none of the present companies in the Company. fellowship, ha, they mm. need uh, Golang. Okay. They're either Python or JavaScript. So, and a little bit of Ruby and all that here and there. Okay. But uh, his primary language is Golang. And he got a mail saying that, you know, we loved your work. Okay. And you're really talented and stuff. But we currently don't have any companies that can give you the support that you need. And he got rejected. And that was so sad because it's like, it's not even his fault. Okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that happens. But I think uh, most of the people can be a part because like JavaScript and Python is like a basic. Common. Yeah. Yeah. Common, yeah. yeah. So I had few queries. Like as you mentioned, projects. So like people who are applying in their early ages, for example, if high school students are applying or people in the first year are applying, so they don't have those great projects because you told that project should be good. So like, hmm. what should they do? Okay, so project is a compulsory option, so it's not like that you can skip the whole part. Okay. Um, yeah. As for like students who are just beginners, okay. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not really necessary that you make a high level like project. Like as I said, it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be end to end, but it should be something that should make sense. Okay. It's like if it's like only a 10 line of code. Okay. But if it's helping people out or if it's solving some problem. Okay. Yeah. Or if it makes sense, like it can be used not by you or by mm -hmm. someone else. Okay. It should make a difference. Right. So if it, if that, if that's happening. Okay. So like, or if you have a calculator, okay. Everyone makes a calculator, but you made a calculator that stands out. That's something new that you added to the calculator, some new feature, yeah. some change. That's important. So you should highlight that part of the project. Okay. Project. You should know yeah. how to showcase your project as well. So like mm -hmm. I made a very big website. Okay. Let's suppose I made something with 10 different features and uh, so much it can do, but I don't know how to put it up. If I don't have a good GitHub, okay. I didn't know how to put a readme. People can't yeah. understand my code, then they're not going to take me in because they have like, you know, okay, so let's suppose I'm a reviewer, I'm seeing your code and I don't understand what's there. I, I don't like your readme is not clear, your code doesn't have comments, it's not properly indented. Okay, it's just mm. scattered in different files, it's not properly for like, you know, not, not really segmented and stuff, it's not in proper folders and stuff. It's going to be really difficult for your reviewer to even see the code. And it is, yeah. since they have limited time, it might happen that they skip your good. Okay. So you should know how to yeah. properly document it as well. Uh, you can refer mm -hmm. to some of the MLH fellowships read me because they're like really well documented. Uh, so mm -hmm. documentation is one important part of the project as well. So you can go through those and you know you can get an idea of how you should put up your read me's and your documentation. Yeah. That is an important thing. And as I said, your, your projects need not be very complicated. Okay. But uh, this should be good. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. and if okay. possible, they can just uh, like you know make the project live or make something that like a person who is reviewing their application can see instantly. Yeah, yeah. nobody is going to clone their code and then gonna run the, on not, their. Not laptop. really, but see again, yeah. I told you if it's really well documented, documented, yeah. right? Okay, they they'll understand without cloning it. Yeah, okay. and it, you know, even like I'll tell you at this point of stage, if I read like ten lines of code, I know what it's doing. Okay, you can see yeah. the algorithm. You know what is happening, right? So you don't really need to clone it or check it if the code is working. You need to understand yeah. what's happening. So understanding is more important, right? Yeah, and don't copy anybody's project because eventually in the interview they are going to catch you, and yeah. that will be the worst thing that can ever happen to anybody. Yeah, they put a red flag on you, and then you don't want that to happen, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I got rejected at least like two or three times before I got into the pre fellowship. So it's okay, guys. It's it's definitely okay. They have very limited seats, and it's not always that yeah. you're gonna be at the top. They will have they'll have probably some other people who want yeah. to apply. Right. So don't be disheartened. Just keep applying and keep learning. Okay. So every yeah. three months, right? You keep applying. So there's like three months you can improve in. Okay, so True. guys, improve. That's one important factor. Improve. And they give feedbacks also, like if your That's application good. is good enough. Yes. So yeah. my first time of rejection was like, your GitHub's not good. You've not done anything. Okay. They told yeah. me. And first thing I did, like, put commits on GitHub every day. Put a put proper documentation. Why are you yeah. committing the code? So you know they have these commits and commit messages and pull request messages. You need to put everything in there. You need to make a good readme. You need to. Um, have a clean code, you know, clean directory setup. You know, your test file should be in a test folder. Your uh, HTML file should be in one folder. Your CSS file should be in one folder. Whatever you're doing, just make everything very yeah. documented and well documented. Yeah, so that the other person reading the code can understand. Yeah, like whatever you have done. Yeah, that is really important. What was your experience of the entire program, and what were your major takeaways from this program? Okay, so um, I'll I'll start with the entire program experience okay so i first went through the pre fellowship okay it was very energetic because i'll tell you how it's it was it was for a month right so everyone was just the same uh, with the same energy for the main fellowship is for three months yeah. the same energy with the same people this was one month so it was more energetic like i'd say like you know it was compressed so it had a mm -hmm. lot of energy we had the uh, hackathons every week Okay, we had like a one week hackathon first, and they had like these awards. Like you know, if you win, you come in the first place. If you're in the first top, uh, top three people, then you get the, those Amazon Echo Dots and stuff, and it's really cool, right? You know, you know, you always yeah. want to get one of those. So you compete, and it's a very friendly competition, and uh, it has a really good process. So there's like you know retrospective days where you understand what you've done good, what you've done bad, and what you can improve on. Okay, what are, yeah. what were your major red flags in the week? So you keep giving yourself feedback, and your mentors also give you feedback. Yeah, so you keep improving within the short duration. Only. You have a lot of experience, and now you're like you're getting polished day by day. Okay, then every day you need to put up these stand-up notes. Okay, so what these stand-up notes are basically, you need to tell them what you've done within, within the day. Okay, so um, in that day, what are you doing, and what what blockers you faced? Did you face blockers? How do you improve them? How do you contact them? And your mentors are always there to help you out, right? So within a short period of time, you get really good. Okay. Uh, so that was my first thing that uh, you have these like you know you get polished okay and you have a lot yeah. of fun you have a lot of energy you have these like mini events and uh, every Wednesday there's a show and tell what what is what's a show and tell it's basically like a small workshop that one of your teammates like your pod mates does and you learn mm -hmm. a new technology within fifteen minutes because like very wow. small okay and you learn a new technology like my friend did something on blockchain my other friend did one something on Docker and I was completely new to these technologies right but I got to learn a lot of lot about it during mm -hmm. in a very short period of time so that's really fun uh, then apart from that you get feedback of, on your work how you can improve you can make your pull request and everything better so in technical support as well okay you get really better because like when you actually go out to the world and you don't have mentors but you're making like you know pull requests so you're just contributing to open source or anything like that uh, you need to know how to put everything in place right your comment yeah. messages should be good and everything so that the companies that you can apply for them, you know, they know how to review your code, so you get you get trained here for the same. Okay, and that was the pre-fellowship experience, and then mm -hmm. in the fellowship, I actually contributed to PyTorch code. Okay, I started with Facebook's Pyre, and then uh, Pyre uh, needed something to do with uh, 
PyTorch. So I contributed to Py, uh, PyTorch and now I'm contributing to Fire as well. So these are two big projects by Facebook and I was like, okay, glad to be a part of this. Um, my friends work on Adobe, Beta POS and other, you know, Facebook's small projects, smaller, the other projects. I wouldn't say smaller, they're really huge, <laughs> to be honest. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's all about me. So I learned a lot. It was a lot of fun. Okay. And they, all, they uh, we also have like a game day, okay? So in that day, so all of us come together and play all these games. It's so much fun because, uh, you know, it's like the whole week you're stressed about, you know, your work or your school life and, you know, assignments and everything. And you also yeah. have your friendships work. And then you come, like one hour, you just chill, like, you know, um, take, play games with your court member. That it's like really fun games. Like, I don't know if you all have heard about this, but code names and scribble and scribble yeah. items quite popular but yeah. you know, like code names and everything and you play that's just so much fun it, it de-stresses everything of your week so in all the fellowship is really balanced out because it, mm. it's not only work but it's experience it also ha- is ha- it has fun okay so it also balances out the whole thing right so it's, it's really mm. fun i would say that at least not for the main fellowship it, you all should always try for the pre-fellowship you'll get like a real industry experience Okay, yeah. and then I also like to have a contact directly with the Facebook's people, right? So you also get industry connections, and if yeah. you're good at it, if you're good at your work, you you can probably you know uh, go ahead and apply for their internship programs, and they'll happily mm-hmm. give you a reference. Okay, so like mm-hmm. my maintainer, you know, always tells me that if you want to work at Facebook, just let us know. We'll help you out with the whole process and everything. And that's just so you know, it's so nice, right? It's so overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, so mm-hmm. apart from that, MLS fellowship has a lot of perks. Like it has a stipend. The main fellowship, not the pre fellowship, is uh, it's not. It doesn't have a stipend, mm-hmm. but the main fellowship does have a stipend. It varies uh, from country to country on the parity, but it's uh, really sufficient, I would say, and it's really justified. Um, so it, that's mm-hmm. one also work that you know you, you're contributing to open source and also mm-hmm. uh, side by side, right? Yeah, like it's an additional stipend, so it covers for you know whatever time you miss. Yeah, it's really fun. And I think uh, students are getting exposed to open source through this program. And if you're getting selected in your first or second year or maybe earlier, so I think it's a really great opportunity. And then you can uh, be a part of other programs as well, like other open source programs that are there. Yeah, hmm. yeah true. You can also apply to like GSOC and everything after this. GSOC, yeah. the Linux Foundations, Fellowship. That there there's, are so uh, many. Yeah. yeah, there's so many. These are all the like, top ones, I'd say. Yeah, and the mentors, like all these, uh, the repositories that you mentioned, these are there in GSOC also or other programs as well. So you have direct contact with the mentors. So you can like directly contact them or ask your doubts and everything. It's amazing. Yeah, Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So Ishika, anything else or any other tips from your end that you'd like to give to the students who are planning to apply this month, like December, this cohort? Yeah, so my um, only tip would be that don't apply just because in the whole peer pressure scene that, you know, everyone's getting somewhere, you know, even I should get something somewhere. Okay, do it only if you're passionate about it. Okay, if you're passionate about it, then you'll not die out. But in the whole process, it's really it's really a long process. So um, mm. you might die out, okay, and then your whole energy is waste, even the people who are, um, you know, in the fellowship might, you know, think that you're a waste, not a waste, but, you know, their time is also getting wasted, so apply yeah. if you're passionate, that would be one. Second, make good, um, even if you don't, like, get selected, you know, keep trying, and keep improving clients that you can get online, okay, like your LinkedIn, uh, make it optimized, follow people that, you know, you're aiming to be. Okay, then uh, keep pushing code to GitHub. Keep practicing at least even if small, but do something every day. You know, a small piece of code, like just write one line in a day. It's gonna be 365 lines of code in a year. Okay, so that small, that small, small drop is gonna add up to an ocean. So if not today, tomorrow you're gonna be better. Tomorrow, yeah, it's gonna happen. Just like, you know, have that patience. keep trying, yeah. Yeah, keep confidence in yourself. Like, that's how I did it. Like, I got at least rejected three, four times, so don't worry. And I keep getting rejected, like, every day for every other thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The important part is keep trying. Do not give up. And, like, if you're in your first year, then you have a lot of time. Like, hmm. so yeah, I started my first year. 
I started my first year, so no worries. Yeah, and one thing more, like don't start one day before. Like as you mentioned that you have a GitHub and everything, so you cannot do everything in one day or one week. Like start at least one month before. That is also less, I think, but at least yeah. one month. Yeah, just start today. Yeah, start today. Thank you.